I'd like to call to order the Westmont Village Board meeting, January 17th, 2019, to order at 6 o'clock p.m. and ask Clerk Simsky for a roll call. Mayor Dunstan. Here. The clerk's here, Trustee Addington. Here. Trustee Barker. Here. Trustee Barry is absent. Trustee Guzzo. Here. Trustee Little. Here. Trustee Nero. Here. Attorney Zemanak. Here. Manager May. Here. And Finance Aye. Director Parker. Here. Would everybody please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Uh, at this point, we have open forum. If anybody's here that wants to talk about anything that's not on the agenda, now's the time. Seeing no one, then I'll close open form and move on to reports. For my report, I'm going to call Larry McIntyre to give some updates for us. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor and everyone. Uh, we just wanted to give everybody an update regarding the Sister City program. We had our uh, first committee meeting of the year uh, this week and uh, talked through the budget and the schedule for the upcoming year. And uh, we kind of want to just relay to everybody that this year is going to be much more relaxed than the past couple of years uh, to, you know, to kick off the program. And then also, you know, we had the benefit of a, a great ambassador, uh, Angela Yang, uh, doing a ton of work. And so therefore, we had all these programs and, uh, you know, visits here and visits over there. And uh, but we're going to use this year to kind of catch up a little bit. So we're going to slow down a little bit. And uh, it's our estimate that in terms of budget, uh, we'll probably be requesting at least half of what we've spent in recent years. So, so the budget's going to be dramatically reduced and uh, also our overall programming. And, uh, and that, that's going to get us on track uh, with what we are planning for the future. And what's the information on the, our students going there? Um, everything's moving along. Um, Pete Landreth from the high school uh, has taken uh, the lead in coordinating all of the students. And Angela, of course, has taken the lead on all the activities over in Taiwan. Uh, but uh, 15 students have committed. Uh, tomorrow is the date that they're going to make their second payment. Uh, payments were going to be done in three, three installments. And uh, they're leaving about uh, mid-March. And then uh, they'll be there for about a week and a half. So they get no village. That's all paid for by the families or exactly in kind. There, right. There, we had conversation in, about uh, you know would any funding come from outside uh, sources, including a uh, sister city program. But it was not something that we had previously discussed or budgeted at the committee level. And in addition, uh, all the funds that we have remaining remaining for this current budget year, they're accounted for. So we don't have any excess anywhere. And then additionally, we had, you know, we, we did our research, so we talked with uh, both the school district and Pete Landreth and asked uh, what was the typical protocol, and uh, what they had let us know was that uh, uh, families fund these things 100%. They've never had any uh, funding requests uh, from uh, the students or families, uh, either to the um, uh, school district and or other organizations, so. And the from what I understand, the cost is considerably less than a normal exchange program? Or Absolutely. Uh, Pete um, goes on these trips every year. Every year he plans a different trip and goes all over the world. And typically it's over $4,000 per student uh, to take one of these trips. Um, we worked really hard to make sure that budget was going to be affordable for the students that wanted to go. And we're closer to the $2,400 range. So it's almost half of what is typically spent on these types of things. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, Larry, you could stay there for the Westmont is Bestmont. Thank you very much. Just wanted to let you know um, that the contest promotion has paid off. And uh, uh, in the last week, there was a flurry of entries and uh, had over 17 entries and a wide range of entries. And uh, I think probably the most unique being uh, a gentleman uh, submitted architectural drawings as, as his entry to uh, the Westmont's Best Mom, but we had uh, songs from rock bands and poetry and uh, just write-ups about why Westmont's the best month. So we're going to be reviewing these over the next couple weeks, and we'll be getting back to everybody with those results. Thank you. Thank you. 
And I don't know if anybody has noticed, but Westmont now has been mentioned at ABC News as where the temperature is. Yes. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with our relationship with ABC. So we're getting a little bit more press. Uh, Clerk Simsky. I just have a couple of things to remind people that on January 21st, Monday, um, we will be closed for Martin Luther King Day. And Citizen of the Year nominations, nominations must be submitted to the Westmont Chamber of Commerce, one South Cass, by noon on Friday, March 8th. So um, please, you know, if you have anybody in mind, do it. It's a wonderful event and it's a wonderful ceremony. So that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Well, and Trustee Barry is not here. We'll do Trustee Guzzo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I want to remind everyone that our next public safety committee meeting will be Thursday, February 28th, 4.30 here. Everyone is invited to attend that meeting. Secondly, I also want to let our citizens know that once again, the fire department is holding its Citizens Fire Academy. It is a free five-week course. It starts March 13th, goes through April 10th. Anyone interested can go to westmont.illinois.gov. I was in the first Citizens Fire Academy class and I highly recommend it to anyone who has not taken it. It is phenomenal. Um, and that's all I have, Mayor, thank well, you. Thank you. Trustee Eddington. Yes, sir, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, prior to the meeting tonight, we had a meeting of the community development and uh, there were several things that were brought up one is uh, working on um, some things that have been brought up by citizens or, and or by other people. Um, they have pretty much finalized now the discussion of commercial vehicles parking in residential districts. Um, they're kind of tying that back to some extent to the type of license plate that you have on your vehicle. but. Um, Again, I know we do get questions or um, complaints about vehicles parked in different areas, and we're trying to address those. Um, where will that, see, will that get posted on the webpage, those things that they get, or are we going to wait until the next meeting? I think we're, well, we were circulated at a committee for a comment and to give them feedback, so we're just going to be drafting that, and I, yeah. I suppose. Okay. Prior to that time, it'll be part of the regular public notice, yeah. like with any okay. agenda. And and the other thing was, um, in the in the business districts, the permanency of uh, some places that have had to expand uh, because their business is expanding, and metal containers and how those get handled and used, and of course the last one, which is something that does come up from time to time, is how do we handle trailers, boats, and RV parking in the residential areas. So all three, I think, um, have been put together with some uh, very interesting and, I think, innovative thoughts. Um, we're going to be talking about it again at, um, and, and from the village trustees. We'll come back to community development with, some, with our thoughts and suggestions, but I think they've done a phenomenal job with it um, as we continue to go forward. The other part of it was on the report side, our new community development head, Bruce Sylvester, gave us a absolutely wonderful presentation on the reorganization within his department and also kind of an overview and a couple of things that he mentioned um, that I think is important for us to, to put out to the general public. And that is that the community development department work sometimes in, in conjunction with with the folks in the other departments but for instance they deal strictly with private land it, it's it's my property commercial property everybody else's property in town and that's what they deal with and it's the use of that land and what I might want to do with it as opposed to the health safety and welfare of the community and I think that's, that's very important to understand where they are and what they do. So if you want to do something with a piece of property in town and it's private property, you go to them and say, you know, I want to build this or I want to 
do a fence or I want a, a bigger house or whatever the case might be, and they're going to work with you. And, and again, uh, that's what they do. Uh, there is a lot of reorganization going on. Uh, I think everybody knows we lost our planner, um, and they've been going through an interview process, and hopefully by tomorrow they'll make a decision on the two finalists. And hopefully that person would come on board in the next four to six weeks and we'll start bringing his staff back up to where it should be with the things that they do. Um, the other thing they talked about was where they're at so far this year with the permitting process. Fees and permits are way up. Um, so they, this department continues to generate for the village substantial revenue with the things that are going and moving along, which is always a positive. And then the last thing that they talked about was where we're at with code enforcement. And I think the most important thing there is that that appears at, for now uh, to be moving along at a much better pace, an easier pace, since we've gone to this education process rather than through the county court system with a lot of these things. So they're being finalized quicker and the fines are probably a little more in line. People are paying them and uh, so there's some revenue now being generated out of that process that we didn't have before. And through the education process, that revenue stays with us. So um, uh, well, again, that's Bruce, the difference. what's I mean, that? The, the revenue was always there. It was being taken by the county. Right. So. Now it stays yeah. with us. So. Uh, again, that seems to be working, and we're real pleased with that. And um, so good luck on hiring the next person. And he's had another resignation from one of the staff people. So Bruce is going to be busy hiring people. But that's good, because that means we keep moving forward. The other thing that I have is last night, DuPage mayors and managers had their annual legislative dinner. Uh, and we unveiled our legislative, our legislative priorities for 2019. There's basically five that, that we've identified. Protecting local government um, income through the distributive fund revenue, uh, which we call LGDF. Um, consolidating the public pension, safety pensions to make that better. Um, preserving local authority. Uh, repairing and improving LNI infrastructure, which I think everybody knows has got some problems, and then reforming some of the public works laws. Um, what I thought was positive, and um, Trustee Guzzo was there last night also, as well as Manager May, but I attend these things all the time. I attend the monthly meetings of Mayors and Managers Legislative Committee, and for three over three years, folks, I've heard, I, the message was, we, we, nobody will talk to us, we can't get anything done. And last night, we heard from 17 legislators, both sides of the fence, older ones who have been there for many years, experienced, and some of the new freshman um, legislators and senators. And the message is, this administration, at least initially in these first few weeks, <laughs> Okay. In these first few weeks, I think that's is your cue, that, Jim. Tell <laughs> <laughs> me to shut up. Twenty minutes. <laughs> but anyhow, the uh, uh, the message is that they see cooperation and they see the chance to get something done. They're even they talking about a balanced budget. So that in itself is a, I, I think, very positive. Uh, the first meeting of mayors and managers legislative committee will be next Tuesday, so I'll be reporting back on that. And that's all I have, sir. No mention of what the Westman High School basketball team is. I can. I'll, I'll just say the record. The record <laughs> right now. They go into the interstate eight tournament starting on Saturday, and their record today is 18 and two. Awesome. And those who don't know, Jim is like the number one fan. <laughs> so he'll drive the bus, keep the scorebook, he goes with the team. So, thank you. Trustee Barker. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to be a little bit more brief than Jim. <laughs> uh, Westmont First will meet Tuesday, uh, January 22nd at uh, the library at 6 p.m. And 
we are still doing through the Environmental Improvement Committee holiday lights recycling um, through January 31st. Uh, drop off is two locations, the library and the fire department headquarters. No ornaments, no lawn decorations or other holiday decorations, just the lights. That is all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Trustee Little. Thank you, Mayor. The next meeting of the Administration Finance Committee will be February 14th, Valentine's Day. It will be here at 430 in this room. You can bring me flowers and candy. It's fine. Um, community events. We have a brand new event coming to town and I'd like to invite up Bob Fleck because this is all over social media and I think it's time to get the word out via the board. Excellent. Thank you. I see we already have the logo in our email banner up on the screen from the Park District. So what we have happening February 9th, it is a time of the year where there's not a lot of things happening. And if you're not aware, Chicago is now the number one market per capita for microbrew breweries in the country. We're taking advantage of that. We're going to have our first winter beer fest at Ty Warner Park, 3 to 7 p.m. I know some of you have expressed interest in that. Have you bought your tickets? If not, please do so. I still have to buy the tickets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is going to be a great event. It's um, uh, if you're really into craft beers, you enjoy other people's company, you like good food, we're going to have three local food trucks there as well, come on out. It's, uh, it's something new and it's really another form of recreation that really hasn't existed before. Uh, and we do need the word to get out. We are getting a tremendous amount of interest on social media, but at the same time, to be Perfectly honest, I'm coming across a lot of people who still not have heard about this. So anything that the public can do, the village can do to help us out and get that word out, it would be incredibly helpful and appreciated. Oprah Kills Hotel is offering up a special rate through our link for tickets to the event, uh, and they will shuttle guests staying at the hotel over to the beer fest and back. Uh, that's a great opportunity, you know, being responsible. We also offer a reduced designated driver ticket as well, uh, if that is of interest to the public too. So we're getting a, a great help, of course, from the village in planning this in the cooperation. We've got everything in place in terms of licenses, insurance. It's well planned, and it's going to be a fun event. And the tents will be heated, if anyone is curious. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Little, can I ask... Um, I think Bob was coming here for a tent variance. Is that what? That is correct. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's not on the agenda. We have a meeting in two weeks. Could you tell us about what you're looking for? For the variance? Yes. Absolutely. So uh, you know our property at 200 East Quincy Street, which will be the future Park District maintenance facility. It's the old Westmont building products. Right now, everything around the property is six-foot chain link fence. We want to put back an automatic gate, very similar to what Public Works and some other uh, facilities have here in Westmont, an automatic gate that will also be six foot high. This property is in a residential district, which per code requires a four foot high fence. That would be inconsistent with what we have on the property. Furthermore, it would not provide us the same security that we have now. We would like to stick with a six foot automatic gate. So that is what we're looking it, it for. It is. I, I thought it was a tent variance. It is on the agenda, so you'll get a chance to come back up and say that again. <laughs> or, I, or I could pick up where I left yeah, off. That's it. <laughs> right. Any further questions about the Beer Fest? Where can you get the tickets? Tickets are available through the Park District's website. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook at Westmont Winter Beer Festival, but if you go to our website, Right on the uh, homepage, the banner, if you click on it, it will take you to the tickets. And the way we're, we're doing the tickets, you don't actually get a ticket. You'll get a receipt with a unique receipt number on there. If you buy four of those, print all four off, bring them with you. And, of course, 21 and older must present an ID at the event. And that's at westmontparks.org? Yes, westmontparks.org. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 
Next up, I'd like to invite up Larry Forsberg because we have a very special event coming up in February that he loves to talk about. Thank you, Trustee Little, and good evening, trustees. Um, yes, we have our third annual Westmont Restaurant Week coming up, uh, backed by very popular demand. Uh, it's February 28th through March 10th. Uh, we are in the process right now of recruiting restaurants. Uh, last year, we had 22, 20, excuse me, 23 restaurants participate. This year, we will have, our goal is to have 30. So, um, you know, help us spread the word. We're recruiting restaurants right now, and we'll have the announcement of all the participating restaurants on February 1st. And while I'm here, I'll put a plug in. I've already gotten a couple questions about this, our Westmont Reader's Choice Program, uh, where people get to vote for their most favorite restaurants. That is gonna be scheduled for March 14th through the April 3rd, so we'll, we'll get some more information on, out there, on that shortly. So, look forward to seeing everybody during Westmont Restaurant Week. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, you're having an open house in February? Uh, yes, we will. We will have an open house on February the 20th. It's going to be at the Taiwanese Cultural Center. And let me back step one thing. Westmontchamber.com is where you can find out information about the Westmont Restaurant Week. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, that's all I have. Thank okay. you. Uh, Trustee Nero. Thank you, Mayor. Just a few items. Our next Public Works Committee meeting is March 28th, right here at Village Hall, 430. Um, just want to remind everybody a couple other things that we got expecting a big snowstorm so please watch out for the snow plows thank them if you can wave they appreciate it and do a good job clearing the snow also if everybody could be a good neighbor clean up your uh, sidewalk walkways if you have a business uh, keep our residents safe we'd appreciate it a um, couple other things here on February 11th we're gonna have another open house it's gonna be called it's actually our state rep for Westmont uh, Dan Mazaki is gonna be hosting it at one South Cass gonna be a legislative open house quite a few elected officials will be there including our mayor myself and I'm sure a lot of the other board members are gonna be joining us too uh, she's having the state's attorney Bob Berlin our county sheriff Jim Mendrick our county board members uh, both assessors for West My York and Downers Grove Township. Great opportunity to talk to them about your property taxes. Please come. I think this is a great idea. I spoke to her at length about it. She's excited. Um, but I also told her, you know, we have to approve her lease uh, tonight as well. But hopefully we'll do that later on and there'll be no issues. But yeah, please come. It's February 11th, 4 to 7 p.m., 1 South Cass. Dinner and refreshments. You don't get that all the time. Um, and we'll hold her to that. But uh, that is all I have, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, items to be removed from the consent agenda. Does any board members have any item? S seeing none, I'd ask Manager May to please read. This evening, first item on the consent agenda are Village Board Minutes. Board to consider approving the minutes of the Village Board meeting held January 3rd, 2019. Followed by Finance Ordinance Number 18 and the amount of $2,249,428. 64 cents. There are three purchase orders tonight. The first two purchase orders are for ME Simpson Company. First one is in the amount of $46,000. Represents the uh, costs for doing large meter testing, the, the large water meters commercial application. Second purchase order for $32,000 is valve exercising, and that's actually going throughout the community. Um, operating manually operating all the valves throughout the you know to make sure that they that they function if you don't move them for you know 20 years they tend to they tend to stick uh, third purchase order KH renovations thirty two thousand one hundred and fifty four dollars that is uh, related to the police department bathroom remodel I wanted to point out with that purchase order that this is th this is not the agreement you've already uh, approved the agreement in the contract and the, the reason I bring that up is that there was actually a uh, kind of in an indirect way it wasn't an email but there was a electronic service request submitted uh, questioning that the contract wasn't attached to the purchase order uh, on the agenda so you've already done that this is uh, an encumbering amount in fact this isn't even the full amount this is the I don't want to call it a well it's the deposit but it's to you know to start the materials order and everything too so this is the first payment and that payment is also uh, in the finance ordinance so you're approving these simultaneously um, that's the three purchase orders that brings the total of the purchase orders to one hundred and ten thousand one hundred fifty four dollars and that brings the total of purchase orders with finance ordinance number 18 to two million 
$359,582.64. And that is the Secretary General. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve as read? Motion to approve, Nero. Second, Little. Motion has been made and second. On the question, on the valve manually, yeah. do, do they do that how many years? Uh, the, um, uh, what, we do a different amount each year, and you okay. get a fraction of them, but everyone gets touched every is it three years or four? Okay. Every three years. Okay. So these are the shutoff valves that are throughout the community in on the water main network system. So, you know, why do you have these valves and why they need to operate when we have uh, water main breaks and they have to work on them? You have to valve down the amount of water leaking out of the rupture. So the the the, the better your valve network is, is the smaller area you have to impact. Uh, you know, put them out of water while you're doing the repair. So, well, thank you. It's pretty important. <coughs> Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Annie. Yes. Motion passes. Unfinished business. A tax increment financing agreement. Board to consider an ordinance authorizing an economic development agreement with Holiday related to the development of the southwest corner of Cass and Quincy. And I guess our community development director, Sylvester, our manager, May, or Spencer Parker. <laughs> there, this is a good question. There were a lot of people that worked on this, but uh, John and Spencer have. Uh... I'll make a few preliminary comments. Uh, this was postponed uh, from last meeting, so uh, we could have some additional time to fill in some some blank spaces, uh, the negotiations in the last two weeks really have not impacted the economic incentives that have been discussed. But in general, this is a project that is a key cornerstone for the Central Business District redevelopment within the TIF district. The, the developer has, has provided a financial analysis that's been confirmed by the village's TIF uh, expert that this project is not economically feasible without some form of economic TIF incentive from the village. Um, so it kind of meets that but for test that this development would not happen but for the pr uh, providing of incentives. Uh, the incentives that are being provided are the um, TIF increment which is generated over time which is the, the tax increment over time from this property alone and it's a pay as you go. Uh, type agreement, so there's no upfront money being forwarded by the village for this project. As the proper, as increment is earned, it gets, a portion of it gets paid to the developer to help meet their uh, expected and reasonable rate of return. Um, and they have to provide some verification uh, as the years go on that, uh, as to what their rate of return is to justify the continuing uh, TIF expenditures for this agreement. Um, they are purchasing uh, a piece of village-owned property, and they're also acquiring uh, title to a, uh, a portion of an alley that's being vacated. The developer is paying fair market value for each of those to the village. Um, and then lastly, there is a cap on total uh, building and related fees that the village will charge to the developer. Uh, that's in the recent uh, agreement that was circulated by email and passed out uh, tonight. The cap is... 648,000 and change. Um, if there are expenses above and beyond that, um, the village will eat those. But there are certain things like uh, reinspection fees, uh, unique third party expenses like if a structural engineer is retained, et cetera, that will be the developer's obligation. Um, and I guess at this point, happy to answer any other questions other than to. Uh, emphasize that if there are any minor tweaks that are required prior to signature, um, the ordinance authorizes the finance director and myself to make those minor tweaks as long as they don't impact the amount or type of economic assistance that's, that's being provided. And this agreement will not be effective and will not be recorded until the developer uh, cl closes on um, buying the, all the properties that are part of this development, including the village-owned properties. Do I have a motion to approve the ordinance? So move, Guzzo. Second, Little. Motion be made and second on the question. Yeah, you know, I would just Trust like to. Parker. I would just like to hear from Spencer that it went according to our village plan. You know, not that John is not saying that, but you know, from Spencer's <laughs> perspective. 
So I will add to that I think what John said is accurate in all respects. It does meet in terms of the items we've discussed previously as well as the information provided from our TIF consultant. In general terms, as you know, we like to try to think about things in terms of roughly half of the TIF increment. And so in terms of the fees that we're going to be given up front in terms of the permit fees as well as the land purchase price, if we are able to hold those fees and plan on just holding them until we can make, until we make payments to the developer, those fees plus the 50% of the TIF increment that we generate should be enough to cover the amounts that are listed in the agreement. So we have the funds to do that. We've got the financial wherewithal to make it work. We've got the provisions in the contract to be able to make everything fit the terms. And I, I think it's a good investment for the village. It will generate some additional TIF revenue going forward and definitely a good step. And, so yes. And thank you. Simu stimulate that <clears throat> TIF downtown. Yes. Right. Um, and really, this is the way a TIF should work. We're not fronting any money. We're paying as the reimburse as they go, so they have to be successful to get <coughs> their money back. Any other comments? I'd ask for a roll call. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Addington? Yes. Okay. Trustee Little? Yes. Motion passes. Move on to new business. A, 21 North Cass, Cass Avenue Partners, LLC. Board to consider ordinance approving a downtown development grant request in the amount of $5,000 to subsidize the reconstruction of certain improvements at 21 North Cass Avenue in the B1 Downtown Limited Business District. Now we've got Director Sylvester. Still up too soon, sorry. Uh, as just explained, this is a request for a downtown development grant in the amount of $5,000. This is to help the owners of the property at 21 North Cass complete some exterior renovations and improvements. Uh, staff have reviewed it and are comfortable with it. It was discussed briefly previously tonight at the Community Development Committee meeting, uh, at which I believe there were no objections expressed. Uh, I'm available if anyone has any questions. Does this um, reimbursements after a year, is this part of the? I believe yes. Okay. okay. So it's the same program we've approved. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved, Addington. Second, Nero. On the question, we uh, still have available. Only to ahead. just um, add to to what Bruce said is the fact that there there was fifteen thousand dollars in this program yet for this fiscal year, so this will bring the remainder down now to ten, if this one's approved. So, real, is this the first one for this year then? No, we've done what a couple? three, three or four others. Uh, yeah. lo lower this, amounts. This is yeah. part of the funding for the 2018-2019 okay. fiscal year. That's okay. I think we had a two. We had a three. Yeah, and the packet I handed out earlier for the committee meeting, there was a summary of yeah. the grants made during this fiscal year. So, if this one's approved, we'll be done. We'll, we'll still have ten yeah. grand available. For the, so. Yeah, this fiscal year yeah. coming. Do I have a uh, roll call, please? Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Buzo. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Motion passes. New business B, 200 East Quincy, fence height variance. Board to consider ordinance to permit an increase in the height of the fence located in the front yard within the R5 General Residence District at the Westmont Park District property. Director Sylvester. So very briefly, uh, Mr. Fleck started describing the proposed <coughs> gate at their facility on East Quincy earlier tonight, uh, basically explaining that it's part of improvements that the Park District is making to that property. Uh, as he also explained, that property is in an area that is actually zoned residential, and so the height limit for fences and gates is four feet. However, to have this proposed gate be the same height as some existing chain link fence that's already there that is six feet in height, Park District is requesting a variation uh, to allow that gate to be six feet in height. Uh, staff has reviewed it and is recommending approval. Planning and Zoning Commission uh, reviewed it and is recommending approval as well. Bob, would you like to add some more? I would like to show you the location and 
I think this property is significant enough in this area and the changes that we've made that I, if, if you'll oblige me, take five minutes and show you what this is and what it looks like. This is the plan I created for the parkway and the facade improvements two years ago when we were embarking upon this project. And again, this is significant because this property sat abandoned and was an eyesore for eight years. We've taken it over, uh, have already made significant improvements, and our goal is to, with the village's um, recommendations and, and some assistance from the village, make it blend into the residential neighborhood and give it a residential feeling and character. So the location of the gate would be west of the main structure. It would slide to the west and back. And as you see, this is the um, uh, future of what it will look like, and we're very close to that right now. So that's the location. I want to take you back two years. Mm -hmm. This was it. It was not very attractive. Did not have a parkway, off-street parking right up to the front door. It was basically a retail space for um, construction materials. And, of course, it's still going to have a maintenance aspect to it. But the changes have been rather dramatic. With the assistance of Public Works, they like to, like we do at times, break things and tear things out, and they have bigger toys than the Park District. Um, they also got involved with replacing the parkway and pouring their own public sidewalk. We did the landscaping, and this is right now what it looks like today, minus the snow. Um, we've already changed the facade. It's got a parkway. In, in place and by June this will all be completed and landscaped. One thing I want to note, you see this gate off the building here? This is another way we're going to screen what's happening inside the property. We're putting up windscreens, the same windscreens we put around the tennis courts and on the backstops and that is what will also be on the gate to help block the views from the residents into the property. This is an image looking from the east to the building. We've already started some of the landscape screening, and that barn wood shed that you see there, that's going to come down this spring as well. That will not stay. So that will also improve the view from the street. So that's what's happening. Construction will start on the interior build out hopefully in about two weeks so uh, we're waiting on the final permit through the building department and things are moving right along and again thank you to the village and public works for some of the assistance we've had with the improvements out here we know the neighbors are very pleased with it because they've let us know and it looks beautiful mm -hmm. yeah it really does and a really nice job can't wait for the landscaping uh, you also own a parcel to the further to west. the west it's the property address is 134 East Quincy. It was an outlot for Westmont Building Products. They had two outdoor sheds that housed stacks of drywall on pallets. We tore those down very quickly after we inspected them. They were unsafe. Uh, they were, I'm surprised they hadn't fallen yet, to be quite honest. So we locked the gate, and until we uh, could demolish those, we did not touch the property. That has been since taken down. Right now, NPL Construction, who is NICOR's subcontractor doing all the new gas main improvements throughout the community, they are using it as a staging area, which has really been a benefit to all the neighborhoods because otherwise all that equipment, all that debris would be sitting in the parkways around everybody's homes. They will be in there till March 29th. Good. Then after that, they're out of there because we're going to need it as a staging yard while we make the transition into the new space. And the only access is off the road. There's nothing behind. That is correct. Okay. Just a swing gate right there off the street. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the variance? Motion to approve Barker. Second Eddington. Made and second to approve. Additional comments, questions? Oh, attorney. 
just point out uh, maybe for Bob's benefit that the ordinance, uh, like most variants requests of this nature, say that the, the proposed gate has to be built according to the plans that you submitted. So that would include the, the woods or the, the slatting, uh, the sheet, the windshield, I think. The windscreens. Windscreen. Yes. Um, and that the gate and the existing fence have to be continuously maintained and replaced as necessary by the park district. Of course. Mm -hmm. Trustee is, Little. Is NICOR renting that space from you per they, they are, yeah. We did not just give it away. Thank you. Any other? I'd ask for roll call, please. <clears throat> Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Little? Okay, yes. Motion passes. You're going to see Larry for ribbon cutting? <laughs> we will. We'll be yeah. happy to do yeah. that. All right. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. New Business C, Lease for Space in Westmont Center. Board to consider an ordinance approving a Westmont Center lease for newly elected Illinois State Reset Representative Dina Mazzucci. How do you say that? That's close. 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 Manasaki. <laughs> and I uh, asked Manager May to give some additional information. Uh, in our, our, our Westmont Center, our village-owned building, there are uh, many uh, tenants in there, all most governmental or, or not-for-profit based uh, organizations. And uh, Patty Bellock and, and uh, Kirk Dillard, when he was here, uh, all had their offices uh, in town in this building. When uh, uh, Representative Ms. Mizaki actually was uh, appointed to replace Patty Bellock when she retired a little bit earlier before the end of the term and uh, was also newly reelected. So this lease is to re she took on the uh, Bellock's lease and these are the exact same terms as uh, the last <coughs> one and it's just a uh, new tenant. I have a motion. Motion to approve Addington. Second little. Motion made and second to approve on the question. I do have to say that um, at first she did not know if she was going to stay in Westmont. That's a huge benefit for us mm -hmm. to have her right here. Um, so uh, when we had Dillard and uh, Patty there, it helps a lot. We can walk across the street and see her. Mm -hmm. So any other comments? Roll call, please. Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Newell. Yes. Motion passes. New Business D, 2017-18 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Board to consider ordinance accepting the fiscal year 2017-18 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, which is a CAFR. And I got Finance Director Parker to start us off. Right, so wanted to let the board know, first of all, you'll notice there's a difference this year between the way we're doing this compared to how we've done it in the past. As you'll recall, when we did the audit RFP, we talked to the board about the need for hard copies versus relying on digital copies, and the board indicated we did not need to spend the money on the hard copy, so we were able to cut costs a little bit by going with the digital copy, which is why I'm here, and we're going to be looking at things on the screen instead of just turning through our book. So I want to start off by introducing our auditors. As you know, we selected the audit firm of Sikich to perform our audit. They're a firm that we've had in the past, and we're happy to have them again. This is Dan Berg from Sikich. He's going to go into some of the details of the financial report. But before he does, I just want to mention one other difference you'll notice is that this year we're a little bit later in the year. So typically, this is done around November or December. As you know, we're now in January. And I wanted to just let the board know the situations with that. We ran into some issues with a little bit of a delayed report from our actuary. We were able to finally get that resolved, although by the time we got it resolved, in order to hit some of our deadlines for disclosure for bond things, we ended up giving the audit firm and our staff in finance about two or three weeks compared to when they typically would have two or three months. So we are very grateful for the audit staff as well as with my employees diligent hard work to get that all done in a very quick turnaround so that we were able to get things posted by the delayed timeline we had listed in terms of our EMA disclosure for our bonds. Otherwise, that would cause problems if we're saying, oh, we'll get you financial information by this date, and then it doesn't show up by then. That doesn't necessarily look good the next time we go out for bonds. So we are grateful to the auditors for 
doing that rush job and performing a minor Christmas miracle and getting that done on time. <laughs> so Dan Berg's going to go over some of the highlights of the financial reports. He's then also going to go through a document that you have in front of you, the communication to the village board from the audit firm. That's something that often we'll do in executive session as we have that ability to talk through internal control issues because the issues listed in this report are fairly minor in nature. We figured we could just take care of it in open session. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Dan Berg from Sickage. Thank you very Thank much, you. Spencer. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be back in Westmont again. Uh, we last did the audit in 2011, so it, it, it's really nice to be in front of you again. Uh, I, I'm happy to report that the audit went pretty smoothly. Uh, every time the village changes audits, uh, we have to rebuild our permanent file and our understanding of internal control, et cetera. And uh, we accomplished that in June and came back late uh, July and worked into August on the actual testing of the numbers and it went very smoothly. Staff was very responsive to us and outside of the actuarial report that we waited on for a few months after field work, uh, we, were, we, we, we think we would have hit our deadlines no problem in October had that not occurred. So uh, hopefully next year we'll be here much earlier. Um, that said, I have a couple of highlights I'd like to hit. You can give me the speed up sign if you'd like if I'm um, taking too long. I was told I had an hour and a half to. Uh, <laughs> At least. <laughs> understood. understood. So the only part of the report that's truly ours is the opinion. The rest of the report is drawn from representations uh, given to us by uh, management or drawn from your financial records or actually written by management. The three-page opinion, the highlight of which is on the screen, it's commonly referred to as a clean opinion. We call it an unmodified opinion. It's the best opinion we're allowed to give. It's the opinion that you're accustomed to receiving. So congratulations. It simply states the financial statements present fairly in all material respects. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to go through this document uh, and become intimately uh, uh, aware of all the facets of it, I strongly recommend that you begin with uh, the management discussion and analysis that appears immediately after opinion. It goes for about 10 pages. Some of it is boilerplate, but lots of it is written by, uh, it's written by staff. And it includes a lot of the financial highlights and explanations of why the numbers went up or down and some of the changes that occurred during the year. And then, of course, uh, what to expect in the future. So uh, I always recommend that that's the, uh, the starting place. Uh, immediately after that uh, is our financial statements themselves. On page four is the statement of net position. This is the statement that attempts to make a governmental entity look more like a business by converting it to full accrual. So it contains at the top of the page uh, the fixed, the capital assets of about 35 million for the general fund, uh, our, our governmental activities. It also includes all of the long-term debt of the, uh, the village. So if you want to page down a little bit. The long-term debt includes about uh, 50, $15 million of bonds, a couple, uh, almost $3 million in TIF bonds. The biggest component of it is the $35 million of net pension liability for the police uh, pension, the IMRF, and a tiny amount for the firefighters pension. So that changed in 2016. If we go down to the bottom of the page, the equity section, we call it the net position section. This is arranged in the order that you cannot spend it. So your investment in capital assets, the buildings, the streets, uh, the fire trucks, you name it, uh, that cannot be spent. So that's $25 million. Then we, then we show the amount that can be spent, but only on specific type of, uh, of projects or uses. Those are restricted for. And then the bottom number is unassigned. That number turned negative in 2016 when we implemented GASB 68 and put the net pension liability on the books. It's nothing to really be alarmed about. It's that way in almost all of your neighbors as well. So uh, with that, we'll flip over to the statement of activities two pages later on page six and focus on the bottom of page six where we see the net change in net position. GASB tells us when uh, we implemented 
the, the standards that if the number is positive, you're economically better off than you were last year. If the number is negative, you're, you're uh, economically less well off. Uh, both the governmental activities and the business type activities, and remind you that the business type activities is the water and sewer fund, is uh, have positive numbers, four point, uh, almost four million for the governmental activities and the, uh, almost 1.1 million for the business type activities. We did have a prior period adjustment. We put the TIF bonds on the books and records as a long-term liability of the village. Even though the TIF revenue stream is dedicated to that, it's our interpretation of standards that that is indeed a, a long-term liability of the village as well. So that's what the prior period adjustment is. So netting that with the, uh, the net change, uh, we have about 1.5 million to the good for the governmental activities. So with that, I'll switch back to the modified accrual basis of accounting, the way you normally see your financials, and show you at the bottom of page eight that the uh, fund balances, and again, these are arranged in the order you can spend them or you have already spent them. Uh, the general fund has about $15 uh, million in fund balance. Some of that is spoken for for projects in 2019. Uh, there was a deficit uh, budget that was passed of about 900,000 and there was about a million dollars, a million and a half dollars worth of transfers contemplated, mostly to debt service and some to the capital projects and vehicle replacement. So flipping back to the I guess income statement for on a modified accrual basis, it's the statement of revenues, expenditures, changes in fund balances. Toward the bottom of the page, uh, bottom of the statement on page 11, we see the net change in fund balance for the general fund of a positive million two. Uh, that's after a transfer out of $5 million that went to debt service, went to capital projects, it went to the vehicle replacement fund. Uh, and, and we uh, have a, a significant increase. A lot of that increase was due to the uh, non-home rural sales tax for stormwater, about a million one uh, increase from the prior year. So that's, that's just one of the reasons for that. Do you want me to talk about the ivory? Oh, sure. No? Okay. On page 38 in the notes of the financial statements is a, uh, uh, at the bottom of the page is a summary of all your debt. I just wanted to point that out if you were curious to see how it changed from last year to this year. It shows the $7 million of bonds issued. It shows the, the, the relatively small changes to the um, other items with the exception of IMRF where it went down from 5.3 million to 3.2 million dollars uh, for your ultimate liability. That measurement date was as of 12:31:17, and if you remember, our 401ks and our investments looked really good then. Not so good this year, but that was a good measurement date last year. So IMRF really increased their net position and reduced their ultimate liability, including your net pension liability. So. I just wanted to point out that after the notes of the financial statements, we have budget and actual pages, including the general fund, which uh, shows again that the revenues were significantly over budget, the expenditures were significantly under budget, and again, the fund uh, uh, finished in a positive position compared to uh, budget and, and the actual, so. God bless you. I've also wanted to point out very quickly, uh, the, uh, on the IMRF, page 78, we show that at 91% but uh, funded, uh, increase of 7%, like I said, a really good year to, a uh, good time to measure. I'm un unsure what uh, 2018 will bring and show on your financials next year, but um, that, that was a nice increase. On the following page is the police pension. Uh, we're still a little under 50% funded at 48% funded. Um, I can show you on a succeeding page, on page 83, uh, why you're a little below 50% uh, 
growing almost 50 percent uh, and that's early on in 2009 10 11 the village didn't fund to the actuarial determined contribution rate uh, significantly under and as we move into 2012 and beyond the village almost always has since then funded at over the actuarial determined contribution rate so you're catching up basically it's just going to be a slow uh, slow haul According to current statutes, you have until 2040 to be 90% funded, but the village is funding to get to 100% funded by that date. So you're a little more aggressive than the state requires you to be. The last couple pages I wanted to point out, if you were looking for any individual fund information, on page 95 is the income statement for your non-major funds, which include the convention tourism, downtown parking, MFT, DEA, Central Business District, T TIF, uh, debt service, and um, uh, vehicle replacement and storm, so stormwater infrastructure. Just wanted to show you where that was. And the last thing I wanted to point out was that this is a comprehensive annual financial report. This goes in above and beyond what's required by GAAP, that's required by um, standards, it's in compliance with the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate for Excellence in Financial Reporting. So it includes an introductory section in the front and it includes this statistical section in the back that goes from page 108 to 129. A lot of good information in here, a lot of 10-year trend schedules, uh, demographic information and some miscellaneous stats too. I strongly recommend that you flip through it a little bit to see where you've been. It might give you a better idea on how you got here. Um, overall, um, again, the, the, the audit went smoothly and uh, we appreciate uh, staff uh, working hard to be ready for us and being responsive uh, to us once we were on site. We have issued the TIF reports for each of the TIFs. We've issued the library financial statements the, uh, uh, and also the uh, Department of uh, the Comptroller's uh, report, annual financial report that's required by statute. Um, there's one other document I've been asked to talk about and that's the auditor's communication to the board. That's a much, much, much smaller document and it includes, and it's very thin, congratulations to staff in the village. The thicker it is, the more things we say. Um, the, this contains all of our required communication, mostly um, things we, we talk about the qualitative aspects of, of accounting any corrected and uncorrected misstatements we found if we had any disagreements in essence the thing the word you're looking for is no in here we had no disagreements with management we had no issues really we do include our uh, uh, adjusting journal entries and then we have our communication for improvements this is very thin um, we really didn't come up with any uh, substantial recommendations to the, to the village staff regarding internal controls. We would be required to report to you if we found any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. We didn't find any of those. So we do have some, a couple of uh, very small comments and one of them relates to old outstanding checks that need to be followed up on. Uh, to get the money to the payees or deliver it over to the state for compliance with their sheet laws. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about the process, the work and pro product you have before you, or anything else that might be on your mind regarding the audit. I didn't see it on here, but from previous years, do you list a deficiency and now it's been? Uh, we, we did not. Um, we, we could have included our predecessor's comments, but um, that was we, cho we chose, we worked with staff and chose not to. Those comments were considered implemented by us, and therefore we didn't feel a need to repeat them. We, we can do that in the future if you'd like, just so that you can have a one-stop shop for prior year comments. Well, you're only going to have one little one for next year. Right. Um, and I think the, the new software program for uh, eliminated several of those comments. <clears throat> yeah, so we were able to get some of those issues resolved, <coughs> excuse me, with the current software, and then going forward, we'll have all of them taken care of with the new software. Good. 
I have a motion to approve as presented. So moved, Addington. Second, Nero. Motion been made and second. On the question. Anybody? Seeing on roll Thank call. Thank you very much. Great Thank job. You. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Trustee Eddington. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on the agenda for miscellaneous. I don't know, Larry, if this, he doesn't have, okay, good. I, not good, but we don't have anybody <laughs> in the audience. Um, anybody else got a miscellaneous item? Mayor. Yes. Good. New visitor, I don't know if he was. That's what Larry involved. said, I asked, and he Thank you. doesn't want to address the board. So, um, seeing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Little. Second. Second, Guzzo. All right. <laughs> motion been made in second to adjourn. So Roll call, please. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Parker. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Eddington. Yes. Okay, this meeting is adjourned with no executive session. This is the end of the meeting. Thank you.